Good morning. There we go. Thank you, Noble. Hi, rescue girl. Morning. Morning. Okay. Oh, that's garlicky garlic. Uh, good morning. Just the way we like it. Are you excited? I'm excited for sauces. And because you know there's sauces in every country. I'm I'm glad I, I am kind of funny here tonight. I wanted to mix it to my cook, so um hopefully they've all remembered about what's going on our lives and i know um christina and uh from vietnam and bobo from china are really excited to be cooking in the new kitchen so um i'm excited to see what's coming in there and uh, there's christina just selling me a hello so i'm like checking on them jacqueline's still getting her audio Hey, it must be the time change. Nasha had some challenges getting in too. Well, March is Nutrition Month, which is so exciting. And, you know, I think for the most part, Mom, we, we eat pretty good. We eat pretty nutritious all the time. But it's nice to highlight all the extra recipes. Because, as we know, I eat gluten-free and all relatively dairy-free. There's some cheese that I have a bit of. And I'm making a cheese sauce today, so we're gonna have some cheese. Um, but and sugar free, and then you realize that that's really some good foundation and nutrition to begin with. So that's always uh, exciting. But it's nice to make me think a little harder each week about how I'm gonna make sure those dishes stay, stay extra nutritious. And I think our other cooks and guests, everybody's probably gonna be. You know what's gonna happen. And we're going to have a lot of people join in right at the end. For anybody's time who didn't change, they'll be all mixed up on that one. It'll be a fun week this week, Nasha. There'll be lots of people mixed up on times. It will, yeah. I'm trying to remember the countries that don't change. Because so there's part of Chile, I know, that half the year we're an hour time difference, and then the other half we're in the same time zone. Um, and I think now we become in the same time zone. They stay in this time that we just swapped into. But uh, every year it's the same debate around the globe. Should we just stop doing it? And I think we should. Me too. And they would stay in this zone that we're in right now. This one that we're just moving into today, they would say that's it. So we get, you know, it's later in the evenings, right? Yeah. Um, and that type of idea. Who knows? Some scientists or some somebody other than us will make that decision and we'll change our class. There, look at that. Jacqueline had a hard time dialing in there. She's actually in Vietnam, which is super cool. We're so excited for her to be back in Vietnam. So here in Atlanta, Canada, it says, imagine week 136. That's two and a half years. July is going to mark a three-year anniversary. And we're so excited about what that is. Um, Mom and I, we always know what happened on Sundays for supper and lunch, whatever we cook, whatever we're cooking and deciding. And today, it's about sauces. So we're super excited. I'm going to get in. I'm, I'm guessing now she's got our YouTube audience zoomed in. Yep. So welcome. While we're waiting for the rest of our audience, we'll stay here on time. And mom and I will get cooking. It already smells good here in our kitchen. I've done a couple of things in advance. So let's just take a look at the menu. And then now she'll have, we'll have those posted. We might even post some individual recipes this week so you can follow along. I want to put a great acknowledgement out to Shinobu and, and also for all women. It was International Women's Day this week. Shinobu, we recognize you as one of our star female students, and um, uh, she's been studying with us online for one year through last year, and she's just arrived in here in Lunenburg, and we're so excited to see a brave woman take on her own and come around the world to study, and that, hi, Christina, another brave woman who jumped on an airplane around the world to study, and we just want to acknowledge that that international Women's Day 
is, is, is so important. And Nasha herself, she's gonna be graduating from St. Francis University this year. And again, just examples, look at the four of us, of brave women who, who did things that were a little different. And staying healthy and staying nutritious, and we can keep doing that, is such an important part. Christina, it's nice seeing the new kitchen behind you. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I love this place. <laughs> this house too big, very big, and just only two of us live. Well, listen, it's well, nice to the extra space. Yeah, it's very big. It's two floor and a lot of rooms, but only two of us live. Well, Christina, good note. I'll be up for a visit. I know we're all going to stay. <laughs> coming in. Hi, guys. We're excited to meet more sauces and chips. Check it so, so because of the sauce exploration, and I love it because, and I have a friend, she often says, and I'll say this to Kelly, um, food is meant to be sauce. And I love dipping or pouring sauce on it, whatever it is. And that's just what it's all about. And every culture in the world has different unique sauces and things. When I took a cooking course quite a few years ago, the chef I was working with, Chef Trevor Rowe, mm -hmm. hi Trevor, taught me a lot of what they call mother oh, sauces. I will check out the and list. we'll get you guys to hit mute. There we go. I got you. Or, there we go. So what happens is there are base sauces. There's a lot of sauces that start certain ways and then you change it to get that flavor. So because Atlantic Canada, we love barbecue. Barbecue is a big deal here. Um, soon, especially it's a sunny day here, actually might even barbecue later if the weather stays warm. That means it's gonna be about plus five. We still have a lot of snow, but barbecue is amazing. So we're gonna make an amazing maple barbecue sauce. Extremely simple and a delicious ingredient and we're going to do that with some chicken i'm also making a mushroom sauce i absolutely love mushrooms it's one of, one of my favorite things to have and for a long time i didn't which is really funny but now that i absolutely love mushrooms so i'm going to make a really great mushroom sauce and again we're going to use that with some pasta and some chicken so but any one of these sauces you can really use on anything that you would like and to wrap it up, my third sauce is going to be a cheese sauce. Because who doesn't like the lovely cheese sauce? And you know what? I know everybody's not always about all those vegetables, but I've got some wonderful Brussels sprouts. Look at the size of those Brussels sprouts. Aren't they beautiful? They're huge. They're like little baby cabbages. But in the Brussels sprout world, that's a big Brussels sprout. Um, so we're going to steam some of these Brussels sprouts and I've got some beautiful broccoli and we're going to steam those because I want to keep the flavor of those vegetables whole. I want to, I want to maintain, so I don't want to boil them because if I boil the vegetables, I'm going to boil out some of that flavor. So I've cleaned these up and I've cut them up. I cut the ends off the Brussels sprouts and I'm going to cut the Brussels sprouts in half. And um, I've got the broccoli the size that I want it. And I'm gonna cut the little Brussels sprouts in half and show you what they look like inside. It's kind of great. They're just like a tiny baby cabbage. And Brussels sprouts are used in a lot of different, I think there's, uh, I know Jacqueline loves Brussels sprouts. Jacqueline had just zoomed in from Vietnam. So she's gonna be back hopefully soon. So hopefully we'll see that. We see iPad joining us here. Who I will ask whoever is iPad to hit the mute button for us. So those Brussels sprouts, I'm cutting in half. And the reason is they're a little thicker and they're heavier than broccoli. So now they're in and around the same size as those little broccoli flowerettes that I'm gonna put in. That means when I put them all in the steamer, they're gonna cook at the same time. And I know not everybody has like big steamers at home. This is a great thing to pick up at the store. It's a little tray. Mom, I could use a little help. Anyhow, got it. Um, and it just folds up like this, so you it can fit to almost any size pot, right? So you can find them in most kitchen stores, Walmart. Um, check them out if you don't have one. They're not expensive. They're maybe seven or eight dollars Canadian, and they come in silicone too. That's right, Mom. And the great part is, is I've got some water in the bottom of that pot. 
and I just drop that into the pot. You can see there, okay, I'm gonna hold that for a second. And now I'm just gonna add my nice vegetables in and they're gonna stay in the little basket and we're gonna team those up because these are, we're gonna get cooked and these are gonna be for our cheese sauce. Now, the minute I ask mom to, if I get a cup across the front still, you can turn it on, you can turn it on too. See, I said to mom, what's your favorite sauces? And she looked at me and she goes, oh, I love a good cheese. So this is my recipe dedicated to Helen. As we usually do each week, she's my, uh, my support here, but usually gives some great menu suggestions. So I'm gonna cut the rest of those Brussels sprouts in half. So we're gonna get that water. Those are gonna steam. And they're gonna probably steam for about 15 minutes. So we've got to get them the water heated up and get those going. So we're gonna come back to the broccoli. The back in. Um, we've also please put those in to the broccoli, please. Um we've also got Christina and Bobo coming in, which we're seeing Vietnam and China in Serrano, I love it, are coming in and they're gonna share some sauces that inspired they often eat in their countries and we'll see what they're cooking from the new kitchen um, or they're just gonna share some information today. So, but the first sauce and then Jawad is supposed to be here from Morocco, but he just messaged me and he's having a technical issue. So it's a technical issue kind of day. I've got my keep calm and move to Canada mug out today, which is always a favorite. <laughs> um, so, barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce is easy. Um, and so I'm making enough because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use this barbecue sauce on some beautiful roasted chicken that mom and I are having. Um, but I'm going to make enough sauce that's going to have some extra because when you make a homemade barbecue sauce, make a little extra. You know why? And keep in your fridge really, really well. And um, then later when you're freezing your own fresh sauce, you're gonna have it right there and ready to go. So it, this, the, the amount that I'm making in here calls for two cups of ketchup, which is pretty much gonna be me using the amount of ketchup that's in this that's in this jug. So, and I'm happy with it because for me, like I said, I want some of this extra sauce that I'm making. So the next ingredient, I'll give them one thing in here and just get that out and I'm gonna put the vinegar in here. So mom's gonna shake most. I'm gonna give you a little kitchen hack, as they say, or a kitchen tip. The next ingredient that's gonna go into the pot, and, and I'm putting it right in the pot, I'm gonna cook it in. So you know what's really nice about that? All of it goes right into one pot. There's not a lot of steps to this. Um, I'll take the kitchen ball for that. So it's gonna have a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Now I've got a great apple cider vinegar here. I love apple cider vinegar. And it gives the, the zing or the bite to it. So because I know I've got to get the rest of the ketchup out of the jar, I'm gonna pour a little vinegar into the jar. That's some more than I needed. And I'm gonna shake that around. And um Get the rest of the ketchup out of the container. See that? And then I'll clean up all the extra ketchup. It cleans out the container and then not as much waste. So that's gonna go into the container. So we've got two cups of ketchup. We've got a half, half a cup of apple cider vinegar. And of course it's my kitchen. It's gonna be barbecue sauce or sauce without maple. And I decided today I'm gonna use the um, dark maple. So look at the color of that. You can really see the difference in that dark maple syrup. And love it from Angela Ryan, Black Sheep Dark Maple Syrup from Sunday Farms Local Harvest. And you can see, hopefully you can see how thick that is too. So that is very thick. <laughs> um, dark maple syrup has just a little, it's a, a richer taste, a um, more elevated, and because it's, it's the processing, and by the way, maple season is here and Maple Fest is coming up. And our episode on April 2nd, we are gonna have, uh, we're gonna be teaching all things maple 
from in and around here and that's in conjunction with the town of Riverview, Albert County and Maple Fast. So we've got that maple syrup in there. That was really thick maple syrup. But I also keep the maple syrup in the refrigerator. So because it's natural, you wanna make sure that that is. So we're gonna add two tablespoons of honey. A lot of the people when they make this, they choose to make it and instead of maybe honey or maple, you're gonna see them use brown sugar. So that you'll often see if you Google a recipe for barbecue sauce, they'll use to say light pack brown sugar. This honey is really good. Ooh, I got honey everywhere. Um, this, this is when licking the spoon becomes a very good part of being able to cook this, right? So this is all going in the same pot. So we've got our maple syrup, we've got our honey, and now we need to just get a little bit more of that extra, and we've got the ketchup. So now we're going to use some Worcestershire. We always joke around when we say that word on the show. Or lick my hand. War. War. That's for Shire. War. There you go. That's got. So we want to use a tablespoon of this. So I, I'm pretty good at eyeballing a tablespoon. I use just a little more than a tablespoon of mine. I really like the flavor of that. The other thing I'm going to be adding is some fresh lemon juice. Now, I've always got lemons around, but I often buy these really great little organic lemon, and of course mine's not the organic lemon thing from the store. Look, I'm not even gonna be able to get this. There we go. So a tablespoon of lemon juice. And again, that is a sweeter acid. So you need that to balance off what that recipe is gonna be. Now, the last ingredient is using some steak seasoning. So you can go, find a favorite steak seasoning that you have, anything at all that would get you where you need to go. Can you pass me that container, Mom? I've lost my steak seasoning. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my little basket. I've got so many seasonings around. These are wonderful little baskets that I got up from Elsie Bakcha from one of our indigenous stores that we go up to up there. But I've got a little, it's like a steak seasoning mix that's in here. It's got a lot of different things, spices in it. And I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of that into my barbecue sauce. So, and then the other thing that I like to use is a little bit of garlic powder. For somebody that was very well organized in my kitchen today, I can't seem to find anything anymore. So I'm gonna get the garlic powder in there. I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of garlic powder. So right now, that is just the season of spices all stirring around in there. We're gonna simmer this for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna get that, we're gonna show it. And already, it smells amazing. Already smells delicious, but it does need to cook because we put the ketchup in there and we put the, and, and it does need to have, to cook down a little bit. So I'm gonna get this onto the stove. And then I'm gonna invite Christina and Bobo on let's go visit their kitchen so they can tell us what's gonna be cooking there. Hi, uh, we're gonna cook uh, 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 one sauce. We can put on the uh, on the rice and we can eat. Uh, at the beginning, we, we put some ground pork and some corn seed together. Uh, we just buy the frozen corn seed and we put in hot water and then we mix them uh, uh, together. And then uh, we can cook. Uh, we can put some sesame oil and. Uh, a little bit sesame oil, do not put too much. Yeah. And then uh, we use some soy sauce and soy sauce and cooking wine. Yeah, put them together. Also just just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Can you hold it? Yeah. And a little bit cooking wine. And then uh, we can we can uh, mix them together like this. Sometimes uh, the color is not really good at the beginning, but uh, <laughs> it is fine. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we can put in the hot oil. Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> yeah, put them in the hot oil. Oh. 
Okay. Yes, is that correct? And also, if we put some cumin seeds, we said, uh, to make them have more flavor. Do not, do not put them in the hot oil for, for very long time. No, I'll open it. Okay. Okay. You smell so good. Not just the egg. Okay, so the egg. Oh, or I can take it here. Three, right? One, just one. And then put an egg inside with them. Uh, remember to. <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> you, you, you cook this one. Just that. No, I didn't cook. <laughs> okay. You <laughs> got egg is all right. Take the raw one. So, where's the raw one? Where's the raw one? I'll, I'll find it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my god! I just put the the boil the boy the boy fish uh the boy egg. Is this water or yeah, yeah. water? Mm, whatever. This is the last egg we have. <laughs> yeah. So just remember, we can put some egg on on this. Yeah, and uh, it will be more useful. Yeah, oh, maybe we can think about one. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this one. <laughs> I'm always so impressed in how quickly you do that with chopsticks. Yeah. We are master of chopsticks, doing using must use using chopsticks. Yeah. The egg is done. Oh. Yeah, and the uh, at last, we use a lot of uh, chili, a lot of chili. Chili can help us to eat more. Wow. After cooking, we can put this one on the on the rice or on, on something, which, whichever you like. <laughs> Wow, yeah, that is the 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 soft. He he finished Chinese chili sauce. Can put it on the. We only put it on the right to eat, eat lunch or something. Yeah. That's good. That's so interesting. I like to see. There we go. That looks really good. It's like there's the moments where I want to be able to smell it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Do you want? Yeah. Are do you want me to? Okay, but I'm gonna just start my recipe, and I'll come back to see you guys in a minute. Christina, give me a thumbs up. Okay, I'm gonna start. Okay. Bobo, beautiful job. I'll come back to your guys' kitchen and check on what we've got to talk about in a few minutes. I'm gonna get my mushroom sauce started. Because it's really important that we get that. Um, there's a few layers when you're making the mushroom sauce. And the most important thing about that mushroom sauce um, is, Christina, I just hit mute for you guys and you just unmuted yourself again. So could you, you wouldn't mind just hit mute? Thanks, guys. Um, and thanks, everybody online, because one of the things is for our YouTube audience, if you don't have, I'm going to mute you because it's not muted. There, um, because 
it changes on how it views that whole alert. So people hit the unmute, it ends up not being a great experience for the people that are watching on YouTube because all you end up doing is seeing people's iPads and things around. So let's get some mushroom sauce going. So there's a couple of things that we need to layer in, but the first thing we need to do is, oh, okay, sorry. I, I thought mom had already turned the burner on. So I'm not gonna have to start this recipe. So let's just talk about what's in it. So um, we need to get the mushrooms cooking. So here's what's going on with the mushrooms. So I like using multiple types of mushrooms because I really think that it adds a lot of different flavor and mushrooms do taste different. So I've got these nice mini portobellos. You can see those, I've got size of them. They are very earthy. You definitely get a, a much richer scent and flavor. And then I've used some of these really nice white button mushrooms. So I've already cut them all up. So I've just sliced them up into sort of half and half. And because I want them to be able to all fry up at the same rate. So it's so funny because look how much mushrooms are in this bowl. And it's probably close to four cups of mushrooms that's in here. And it's gonna cook down to about a quarter of what we see in the bowl. I feel like sometimes that is the magic that happens um, when we're doing that. <laughs> so um, in getting that going. So we're still waiting for the oil to get heated up. So what we're gonna do, Mom's gonna get the mushrooms going. We never wanna put those into a cold pan because all the mushrooms are gonna do is absorb the oil because they are a little spongy. So I'm just gonna add a few. The beautiful fresh thyme, always one of my favorite ingredients. So I'm just gonna put this in with the mushrooms. Thyme is one of those herbs that's really easy to cook with. It's a heartier herb, so it can stand up to being in the frying pan with the mushrooms and it won't lose anything or add its flavor. Other softer herbs like a basil or something are better as what we call finishing herbs. So those are the ones that uh, are a little bit easier that way. So I'm just calling the time, usually you can pull it, see like that right off the stick and it'll come right off. And this one is actually coming off fairly easily. I grow time every year. I, I have the joke, you can only give the gift of time. <laughs> We're able to do that by um, sharing those things. Yesterday when I was at our local food store, they were also doing a whole lot. Um, there was lots of fresh herbs there and they're not expensive. The package of herbs, if you're curious, this is gonna last many, many weeks and there's a lot in there and that was $3 Canadian. So um, it's not expensive to get fresh herbs. They definitely add a lot more nutrition to your dishes. So I took about six sprigs off there. So I'm also, also gonna add one other herb into my barbecue sauce. So I think mom, that might be hot enough. Can you just add more. the mushrooms now? Yeah. Yep, there we go. I can hear the pan sizzling. Bring over and show that. And one of the other herbs I wanted to put into my barbecue sauce, and I forgot, it's sitting right in front of me, is rosemary. And I've got a rosemary plant that I grow in my kitchen all the time. I like the flavor of rosemary in barbecue sauce. It gives a nice rich, rich earthiness, and it definitely adds the freshness of a fresh herb to that. So I'm using my trusty little kitchen scissors and just cutting the uh, herbs off the side of that right into the pot because that barbecue sauce is gonna be almost ready again. It simmers for about 10 minutes. So we've got mushrooms. I wanted the mushrooms to cook alone in the pan for a few minutes to really get the mushrooms going. Then I'm gonna add some diced onion in with them. And I diced the onion up and around this size. So it's a rough chop. They're all about the same size. So they're chunky enough that I know that there's mushroom in there or onions in there with the mushrooms, but they're not so small that they disappear into this sauce. And I've also got some beautiful diced garlic. So once the mushrooms are about 50% cooked through, I'm gonna add the onions and the garlic into that pan. When you first cook mushrooms, they'll have a lot of moisture will come out of the mushrooms at first. 
So I want to make sure that we get those mushrooms going. And we've got a So they're already in. So I just want to kind of show you how much was in there. Coated the bottom of the pan. And we want, I want to get those with a little bit of like caramelization. So I want to get a little bit of a gold brown. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in that. Because we always want to season as we're going a little bit. Pass that over them. There you go. Um, so it's just going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. And again, it's seasoning as we go. So those mushrooms, maybe three minutes, they're going to cook down. And then here on my cutting board, as I said, I'm going to add these beautiful pile of onions and garlic I have ready to go. And I probably, I know, probably, I know I did. I just put some extra time in with the onions as well. So I've got about, that's about a, about a cup of onions that I've got there. And then I've got about a heaping tablespoon of garlic for me. It was like three small garlic cloves. And at the end of the garlic from my garden, so it's sad. I ran out of my fresh garlic, but that's okay. I know I can go to the farmer's market from the farmers and get some nice fresh local garlic. Still that's here. So a couple of the other ingredients that are going to go into the mushroom sauce is once I get everything cooked down and cooked down to the level that I want, I'm going to add, and white wine is one of the ingredients that I usually make it a half a cup of white wine. I'm actually going to use chicken broth instead of white wine. And instead of adding heavy cream, I'm actually using coconut milk in it. So those are the two switches that I did. The sauce tastes delicious any, any of those ways. Once they see what the consistency is and the thickness, I might use a little cornstarch to thicken it. See, what I'm using in here is you see there's no flour and there's no dairy in this recipe. So it's really helpful for someone who is looking at avoiding or, or you've got, like I do, you've got some family with some allergies. So we always want to make sure that we're taking care of those people in our family as well. How's that with your mom? So I got to show that everybody, just in that short time frame, it takes the magic. Look how much the mushrooms cook down already. It's like a mushroom facial. That smells delicious. That's good. Oh, the barbecue sauce is done. So, Mom, I'm going to give you those. These cutting boards are really handy to get. I often use wooden cutting boards, but these are really nice ones, too, because when you're cutting, and then I carry that over to the stove, I can bend the cutting board and pour it all right into the pot. So, very easy. If you're anywhere near an IKEA, anywhere in the world, I know there's lots of those, you can always go up by and get some of those cutting boards. So, my, my kitchen smells incredible. Yeah. And I see your watch just joined us from Morocco. I know that time zone change, not all countries change. So I'm going to have to ask you why. Um, obviously, Morocco does not change time zones. So um, we put a reminder out in the newsletter to everybody. So I know right now it all feels a little bit for an hour earlier than usual. Let's talk about that barbecue sauce. I'm going to get this barbecue sauce. Um, show you the finished product and I'm going to put it on my chicken and then we're going to go over back over to Christina and Bobo to see what else they have to share from their kitchen and then I like to watch that smells amazing oh can you smell it there's the barbecue sauce it's got a really beautiful color you see it, it doesn't have the perfect red because we've got the, all those nether Spices and that dark, rich maple that we put into it. So this is couldn't be more perfect. Very happy with that. I do need someone to set this down here. Oh, and that made about three cups of barbecue sauce. Remember, I did throw the fresh rosemary in at the end, and that's just going to give it, as we say, an herbaceous feel to it, and it freshens it up. So earlier. I've got some, these are chicken thighs. So I took the chicken thighs and the only thing I put on them was a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. And I started them in the air fryer. They're not cooked through. So they are cooked by about half 
but do you see that nice crispness on the skin? Really fantastic. Just like if it was the summertime and I was out back and doing this on my barbecue, I would be making sure that my chicken is cooked part way through before I start putting that barbecue sauce on. And the biggest reason is you'll burn the barbecue sauce if you put it on too early because chicken takes longer to cook than a lot of other things. Like when we're making a burger, we can put the barbecue sauce on both sides of the burger every time you're flipping it. But with the chicken, it's always a good idea to cook it a little bit first and then we're gonna start to layer that on. I'm not gonna use my barbecue chicken paste, but I am gonna bake this in the oven. So I started the chicken in the air fryer, but if you don't have an air fryer, start the chicken in your oven for about 10 minutes, get it partially cooked. And then that's like I said, now is the fun part because I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna brush this on Get my cutting board here. Like, I want to show you what it looks like, but it's a mess. So that's all right. Let's have a look down here. So we've got, there we go. So the chicken's here. So now I'm just going to take a pastry brush and I'm going to brush that barbecue sauce. And you see how it's nicely sticking onto the chicken. And once I've done all of them, and I will flip them over after and add more. I'm not gonna put any on the bottom right now because that's really just gonna burn off in the oven. And by the way, any great sauces, I know Jacqueline makes this amazing garlic sauce that is from your country, Vietnam, and that her, we've often done some of these layered cooking. So you see that? I'm just gonna put an extra dab on every one because you know, you can. Woo, smells incredible. So there we go. It looks like it's already ready to eat, doesn't it? So those are gonna go into the oven so that they can finish cooking. And they're probably, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that oven. I'm gonna cook those later today because I'm not eating chicken at this time of day. So that's actually gonna sit for a few hours. It is okay to cook chicken, let it sit. I'm just gonna make sure it's cool. I wanna be careful. And then I'm gonna bake it later this afternoon. And when I bake it, I'm going to let it slow bake because remember the chicken is about 50% cooked. So it's not going to take as long. I've already crisped the skin up. And now it's going to soak a bit with that barbecue sauce. You can imagine how delicious that's going to taste later. And when I go to bake it tonight for supper, it's only going to take half the cooking time. So it's a really great way to have and have something done in advance. That was good, Mom. Yeah. Look at the smile on her face. She goes, oh, you know what I'm having for supper tonight. <laughs> so easy barbecue sauce. We saw that it was made very quickly. And I've got a lot of barbecue sauce left here in my pot. So that's going to be ready for me. I'm going to let that cool completely off. And then I'm just going to store it in my refrigerator in a jar. That way I can enjoy it for many more weeks to come. So, um, oh, and it's just sitting here. And I have to tell you. It is unbelievable how rich the scent is. I'm just going to remind everybody, you really make sure that you do cook that for at least 10 minutes because there's the vinegar and the ketchup and you want to get that cooked together so that those flavors mix and meld really well together. Oh, that's great. So I'm going to go over to Chris and hand you this. We're going to have a look, look at the base of our mushroom sauce in the bottle. Thanks, Mom. So look at this. Oh, it smells incredible. Totally different smell now. See, there's those mushrooms and onions perfectly cooked up. That is now mushrooms and onions, and it's still not as much. That's how much those mushrooms cook down. And I can smell the beautiful thyme. And of course, we've got some salt and pepper in there. I want to remind you, there's no weather spices other than those spices in that dish. So now we're going to put a splash of, like I said, this is when you would put your white wine so we're substituting out the white wine and this is a little glass here and it's got a quarter of a cup so i'm going to put a quarter of a cup of chicken broth in that and i'm just going to stir that for a little bit and we're going to let that cook down the other great ingredient is i just want to get that warmed up 
is I'm gonna add in, like I said, you could use cream, you could use milk. Many of these recipes will call for heavy cream, but um, I love coconut milk. So coconut milk is what's gonna go in. So that's just gonna, if, if it was white wine that I was just putting in there right now, then we would really need it to cook for 10 minutes because what you wanna do is burn out a bit of that alcohol that be left behind with the flavor. Um, but because it was chicken broth, I don't have to wait 10 minutes or five minutes. So I'm gonna use about the same amount of the, the, the coconut milk. And coconut milk has about the same consistency as regular milk. So or almond milk would be just as beautiful. Oat milk, anything for those of us. Yeah, there she's got to touch that one. There. So she's just gonna combine those two together and really the last ingredient that goes into this sauce. And we want to get the heat back up. So the heat's at a really, really good temperature because I need to melt in a quarter of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. So beautiful finish off. And the thing about Parmesan, and, and this recipe doesn't work with other cheeses, unless maybe you use a pecorino, it needs to be that fine uh, brine type of cheese because it really just melts into the recipe. You don't really feel, if you use mozzarella or something, it's gonna feel like a pizza. So just remember that. So that's a quarter of a cup, like a heaping quarter of a cup because they do like cheese. Um, and that's that beautiful Parmesan cheese. So as soon as that's up at the temperature, oh, look at that, it's simmering. So we're gonna sprinkle on top that Parmesan cheese. Mom's gonna stir that in and we'll have a look at what that finished sauce looks like. And when I come back from Bobo and Christina's kitchen, I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to, how I'm preparing the chicken, because that sauce is going to be a chicken and pasta dish when we're done. So Christina and Bobo, do you have a couple more things to share from your kitchen? Yep, uh, so this one we have, uh... Many different way to cook that. It it, it all depends on your um, uh, your appetite. Uh, we can also put some small potato and we deep fry, and then we put some uh, ground pork together with some soy sauce and oyster oil, and also we put some chili. Yeah, this is another way. And uh, uh, if you like to uh, have more sweet and fresh uh, feeling, uh, we can also cook with some sugar. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Maple um, usually do not do not put maple syrup because um, uh, we need if you want more fresh, you need to put some um some sugar in the in the hot oil first, and until it go brown and with some bubble, and then we put other things together. Yeah, do not put maple syrup and it will burn. Yeah. Oh, okay. And also for the maple syrup, we cannot monitor the the time because it is already brown. Yeah, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, we can also put some uh, other ingredients like mushroom or um, tomato or something. Yeah, but usually if you want to put tomato inside, do not put too much oil. <laughs> yeah, fried tomato is not, not really yummy. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, usually we put it on, 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 the, on the rest and uh, uh, sometimes like Christina, she prefer to put on the bread or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all depends on. Yeah. Very Chinese style. <laughs> Actually, Chinese Chinese cuisine and Vietnamese cuisines are similar. So we uh sometimes when we cook together, it's actually similar, similar to, to some of Vietnamese food. And he cooks really well. I think it's he it's remind me a lot of my mom food. <laughs> <laughs> your mom. Yeah, it's my mom. Because I always miss Vietnamese food. <laughs> oh, uh, you know what? I you know what I love about this show is food memories. Right, food brings us to our mothers, our grandma, our aunts. My aunt Rita is usually here. She's having a challenge with a computer again today, and it's that's one of my my favorite things is the food memories that are created. Right, and we always remember. 
who put that much in, you know, how they made a dish and what made it special. And everything. that's exciting. We're really excited. March 22nd, my mom and I and my aunt Julia are going to be in Fredericton at Hanwell Park Academy cooking with 25 grade five students and we're making pizza. So it's going to be really exciting. We'll be able to share some behind the scenes clips on our Facebook page, but it is a private event. So it's not something that's going to be aired for all to see. But it's definitely really good. Like we'll get some of the clips. We know that Fredericton High School has some of their grade 11 and 12 students coming down. Their film class is going to be practicing. So it's all about experiential learning for the students. And how's that look, Mom? Can I have it? All right. Look at this, everybody. Here is our mushroom cream sauce. And what's really beautiful, so I did add in while mom was cooking it, we went over, um, because I wanted to thicken the sauce just a bit, because now we're gonna be using it for pasta. So I put a little bit of cornstarch. I put a little bit of cornstarch, and I mixed the cornstarch with a little bit more of the coconut milk in this little container first, so that the powdered cornstarch and the milk were mixed up at the same temperature. And then when I know there was no lumps or anything in it, I put that into the pan and it immediately thickened that up. You have to watch with cornstarch, use a little bit first and not a lot because then you end up making it too thick and then you end up trying to thin it back out. So just, just watch that when you're using those ingredients. But it smells delicious. I'm sure it tastes divine. So the next thing we need to do is I need to just get a frying pan out here um there we go we're gonna get this frying pan heated up and i'm going to cook some of the chicken that i've got ready here and where is my chicken mom my raw chicken here all right so same with the chicken beam i've got four um boneless skinless chicken thighs so I've, we've already, there's none of that in them. What are the sides I've already got seasoned? And then the other side, because I want to make sure I always season the chicken a little bit, is we're just going to use, again, very simple, a little bit of salt and pepper. And I like to use a little bit, I've got a little bit of onion powder here that I've got in. And I'm just going to sprinkle that on the top. So then we've just got those with a little bit of seasoning. As you can see there, and we're going to get them into the frying pan with probably some avocado oil. I'm not going to use olive oil for this. I'm going to use another oil because you want a higher cooking temp. And what I want to do is grill these so they get nice and brown on either side and cook through. Dark meat in this format laid out fast cooks very quickly. And we're also going to be finishing it in the mushroom sauce with the pasta later. So once that's heat up, my mom's going to put there. Probably about two minutes either side, and that chicken's gonna be ready to roll. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my last sauce, and I'm gonna ask you why. Um, I think prepared a little bit about the PowerPoint presentation. I just wanna make sure this technical is working. Juad, do you wanna unmute? Let me know if you're gonna be able to share that video, because I thought maybe we could go over and check on that Moroccan sauce that you were gonna talk about. Well, do I, can you speak up? Yeah. We can hear you, but very, very faintly. No, I think it's good. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, I will uh, show, tell you some information about Moroccan sauces. So yeah. So you want me to talk right now or wait? Sorry guys, are we having technical difficulties? Hello? I can hear you. What? Yeah, I can hear you. 
Were you screen sharing something, Gerard? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. We can see it now. Yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. Yeah, uh, so please, I'm going to talk a little bit about Sotho de Morocco. And as uh, you know, Sotho de Morocco, yeah, exists in several types, including local, imported uh, sources, as by other cultures. But my focus will, uh, will be uh, on the original sources, Moroccan sources. And uh, yeah, as I said, many, but I choose to show you some pictures to see some examples. Like uh, this green one, it's called Chermola with the uh, nine ingredients. This Moroccan tomato sauce, uh, it's called uh, shikshuka with 10 ingredients. And this uh, Moroccan mint white sauce, it uh, looks like, like a mayonnaise. That's why I mentioned the ingredients here, just to to have this like difference between the two. It's like a, it's made by Greek yogurt, lemon juice, mint, Salt, uh, tahini, or uh, tahina, it's like a middle, middle, mid, I think it's a Middle Eastern uh, condiments. Yeah, made from uh, toasted ground, uh, helix sesame, and the uh, harissa sauce. It's a little it's spicy, as you see, see in the picture, with uh, nine ingredients, and the meatball sauce, and uh, there are many others, but uh, like, um, I'm gonna talk just for uh, Charmola. If you please uh, uh, allow me, I will uh, show you the next slide to talk a little bit about Charmola. There is like, a, it's the famous one in Morocco, the famous sauce in Morocco. Uh, there are three types of Charmola, the green without paprika and the uh, ingredients. The red one with uh, paprika, sometimes with harissa, the spicy and uh, yeah the, the yellow one with the curcuma so the, those are the ingredients I focus it on the green one as I, I mentioned because we use it a lot of uh, in a lot of dishes the ingredients are one red onion chop it into small pieces five uh, four uh, cloves of garlic one bunch uh, cilantro large skin remove it one bunch Parsley, large skin, remove it. Two tablespoons smoked paprika. One tablespoon uh, turmeric. One quarter tablespoon cayenne pepper. Uh, half cup extra virgin oil, fourth. And one uh, teaspoon uh, salt. So uh, uh, this uh, the great uh, the great thing about this uh, charmula is that it's own flavor uh, full spice packet. Once you have uh, created it, you don't need to add any other herbs or spices. So whatever you are uh, using it with, it uh, creates the flavor for you. Uh, we use it to write with uh, like uh, dried chicken, uh, as you see in the this uh, third slide. But the perfect dish with is with like with fish and vegetables. Like for example, this tagine, this fish tagine with the uh, Moroccan sardine. Uh, we put two, uh, two sardinas together and uh, this sauce uh, between them and with the uh, vegetable uh, too. So I have also heard it's been used to top it on tomatoes as they roast in the oven. So yeah, and for the nutrition, as we are in the month of nutrition, March, so like uh, uh, in this sauce, we have like calories, uh, 100 to 30, 32 kilo calories, carbohydrates, we have three grams, protein one gram, uh, fat uh, we have 14 grams, uh, saturated fat we have two grams, for the unsaturated fat we have one gram, monounsaturated fat we have 10 grams, sodium we have 200 and uh, uh, 97 milligram, potassium we have 90 milligram, fiber we have one gram, sugar we have one gram, vitamins we have five gra milligram, Vita vitamin A we have uh, five milligram, uh, vitamin C we have 11 milligram, calcium we have 18 milligram. So yeah, we have a lot of benefits from this uh, sauce. It's uh, easy to make. 
and uh, yeah, we have. I give uh, I give it a try, so you can make your one dish or some smoother, some uh, termola on a white fish and uh, bake. So like a uh, super and delicious. And uh, yeah, in instruction, I think uh, you must put the the red onion pieces and the garlic until we'll uh, stop it. And uh, add the rest of ingredients. Blend until only very very small bites of onion are left. Some people like uh, to blend it until smooth. Uh, for me, I like the, the bites of onion and the garlic. It gives uh, like uh, more uh, more zest in the, in each bite. And, uh, um, yeah, I um, advise you guys to to try this uh, delicious uh, sauce. It's like uh, it give you like I just said the flavor for anything. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you will like it. So yeah. Thank you, Jawad. Thank you. Thank you. Fast and ready here uh -huh, at our kitchen. Um, and we're just trying to balance. So we've got a few things on the go. So mom just finished stirring off the chicken. And I've got my cheese sauce base going, okay? So I'm keeping it stirring right now. I'm just trying to put my board down here. Camera down. So right now, this is a hot pot. I've got it on a hot plate in front of me. And I started with some butter, two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour in the bottom of the pot. And I and I had to constantly stir it because you don't want to burn it. And, it. and I built what was called a roux. And then I added a cup of chicken stock. And I let it simmer until that mixture got hot. And now I slowly added, I've already stirred in, uh, a quarter of a cup of Parmesan. And now I'm gonna put in the cheddar. And if you see the trick to this, because the liquid's hot, is for me to keep stirring. It doesn't still need to be on the stove at this point because the liquid is really, really hot. So basically, and it's now the cheddar is fun because it totally changes the color of the sauce once I add the cheddar to it. And as you see, it's slowly melting. So I've got three cheeses in there. I've got Parmesan. I have one cheddar. And then I actually put some Habanero Monterey Jack from a great supplier at the Moncton Market. So that's getting all picked up. That cheesy. Put that back on the burner. The burner's got red and hot. Can you turn that, Mom, if you don't mind? Unfortunately, I think my liquid had cooled down just a little bit. Um, prior to getting on there, I see the, the old cheddar is taking a little bit more to heat. So the burner's off, but there's still some warmth to the burner. So mom's still just stirring that pot over with a little bit of the warmth, just so we can get that cheese melted. The trick to that recipe, and I should have had my timing better, um, as soon as the liquid, so remember, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, you stir that till it gets creamy. Do not let it turn brown, and it will turn brown very quickly. Um, and then you add a cup of chicken stock. So again, I'm not any, adding other dairy because I didn't add cream or milk because obviously the, the cheese is creamy enough. Um, so once I got that together, and again, I had my cheese melted up, I was melted up, all ready to go here. And I, and you can use whatever cheeses you want. You can use one cheese, you can use two. I used three. I love the saltiness that Parmesan gives. So I love using Parmesan in a sauce because it seems to give a really great undertone to it. And then again, like I said, I used old cheddar and then the white cheese was a habanero Monterey Jack. So there will be a little few flakes in my cheese sauce because there were some flakes in the cheese. If you wanted to spice it up, if you wanted to spice it up, Perfect, Mom, that was beautiful. You could add any extra spices because you can use it on nachos, you can put it on anything that you want. I, I'm gonna put that on the vegetable. Oh, yeah. um, and you can put that on anything you want. We know what we're putting it on. Give us that guy. We're gonna put it on some vegetables. I'm just gonna ask Mom to put a couple pieces of broccoli and some 
of those Brussels sprouts that we steamed up. This smells amazing. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see how perfect it is. Look at that. And that's with a fork. That's with a fork that I put it at. There's that rich creaminess. And like you can see, is you can really put this sauce on anything that you're desiring to put a cheese sauce on. But it really doesn't take much time at all. And um, I just need a spoon one that I believe is about to win this. So we have those beautiful Brussels sprouts and that lovely broccoli. Look how nice and rich and green they still are. You can and steam them. And that we didn't um, boil them. So we kept all that beautiful flavor in. So now the beets are resistance. That's what we want. Look at that. You wonder what I am going to have for breakfast? You're seeing it right now. So depending on how much cheese sauce you can dip, look, you can see it sticking to a little bit to the end of the spoon. Remember when you use the cheese sauce, it is going to tighten a little bit. And there we go. This is now almost going to be like me having a bowl of cheese sauce. So there's your broccoli and Brussels sprouts with a beautiful cheese sauce. Very, very simple to make. I'm going to move these out of the way. And as always, some our fruits and fears. We're so excited to accept the time with you today. Uh, we're going to show you our last recipe. We've got the chicken. See that? Beautifully browned. Remember, we didn't put a lot of seasoning on the chicken, really. There was just some salt and pepper. A little bit of garlic powder on that. Not much at all. Because we really want the star of this dish to be that beautiful, that beautiful mushroom sauce. So it's there in the pan. So we're just going to All right. All right, guys, I need a bigger serving area. I mean, I'm trusting that that's going to do what I want it to do. So, there we go. And we'll just layer a mushroom sauce over the top of that. And then later, when we're having this, I'll have that with some nice fresh pasta. So, I, uh, yeah, because she was like, look at that. Billy make that for you. Um, this is really East Coast flavors. I know it's mentioned one of my favorite chefs to watch, Jamie Oliver. This is a dish I saw him make years and years ago. Um, come on over here, Mom. Somebody can see you. And it is delicious. Mom knows I make a lot of different mushroom sauces. We'll put it on pork chops. We'll put it on, and it's really great if you're making pork chop, a baked potato. On top of a baked potato, that mushroom sauce is incredibly delicious. So. Uh, from our kitchen to yours each and every week, we know that you've enjoyed it. Remembering the time zone change, so it's your 10.04 a.m. here in Atlantic Canada. So um, it was a little bit earlier day today for all of us, but we've got beautiful barbecue sauce. Um, I'm just going to hold up the final dishes here to show you what we have. Thanks, Mom. So that beautiful barbecue sauce that's from those that chicken that we're going to have later, the mushrooms, 